Hi there. In this lesson, we'll take a deeper look into semantic HTML5 tags. HTML5 tags are divided into two categories, non-semantic and semantic. Div and span tags are examples of non-semantic tags. They're useful for creating a web page structure and layout, but don't really provide search engines and accessibility tools with a good description of the type of content that they're formatting on the page. HTML5 semantic tags were partly created based on div IDs and classes that were often being used by web designers and developers to organize the structure of a web page. Semantic HTML5 tags like these help to describe the type and purpose of the content contained. This isn't to say that div and span tags are no longer used, but some div and span tags can be defined more clearly with semantic tags that best describe the content within the tag. Let's look at some of the structural web page semantic tags used by web designers. The header tag contains the header bar at the top of the page and often the container for navigation links in the nav tag. Sometimes a main tag is used to denote the primary content on the page. In this example, the article tag is serving that role. This tag indicates that the main content is a type of article. Within that article, there may be a figure tag to indicate a type of graphic that often conveys info or data. Lastly, in this example, we have the footer tag that appears at the bottom of the page and often contains additional site links, copyright and contact information, and social media links. Other structural semantic tags could be included on a web page. For example, an aside tag within an article tag would create a sidebar of information. A section tag might be used to indicate a chunk of content that's related on a page. Some HTML5 semantic tags don't define much of the page's structure, but do give more information about how the type of content within a container should be formatted. For example, the block quote tag indents the text, sometimes adds a vertical bar to the left side of the quote, and can adjust the text formatting. The mark tag highlights any text within the tag. Other tags address types of media or content related to media. A figure tag can be used to define an image, chart, diagram, or other visual elements related to the page's content. Below or beside a figure tag, a web designer might include a fig caption tag to define text that should accompany the figure as a caption. Now let's dive in and create some web pages with semantic tags. In this example, we have a web page already kind of constructed here that we've begun, but we need to provide it with some more semantic tags in order to give the browser a better idea of the context of the different types of content that's relayed on the page. So let's start adding some of those semantic tags within the structure so within our body tag i'm going to add a header tag here and the header is actually going to be that first heading one tag that's already listed so i'm going to add that tag uh, right there around that header one tag and there's our header tag and then after our header we have our main content so i'm going to include a main tag here and we will end that main tag just after the paragraph here. So we'll contain all of that in there. This last piece here is more of a footer. It's a citation of where the content came from. So I'm going to add a footer tag here. And then after that content, we'll make sure to close off our footer tag. Now, the other nice thing about these tags is that I can also stylize them. So if I go into my CSS here, I've stylized these different tags. So you can see that the header tag, the footer tag, and even the main tag have some different widths and styling that I've added to those specific pieces of content. So now let's go ahead and save this and reload it and take a look at our new structure. 
and that looks a lot better. We've got an image now that's added to the header, and uh, that's part of the styling that we added into the CSS. So we added a background cover image there. And then we've also got our main content separated out. And then if we scroll down here to the bottom, you'll see our source, and that's our footer down at the bottom piece and that's also stylized. So we can add some more content to this page and build it out, but now at least we have a really good semantic structure to our web page. And now it's your turn to do some coding.